Did you come looking for mayhem today? You're going to get mayhem in a way you couldn't even expect. We're going to be keeping guys. We're going to be trading guys. We're going to be cutting guys. We're going to be doing whatever we want. Like, subscribe, leave a comment, and enjoy the ride. Your mission, should you choose to accept it, is to crush, humiliate, and totally destroy your competition in your fantasy football draft. It's incredibly simple, so let me just break it down for you. Ultimate Draft Kit. The Ultimate Draft Kit for the fantasy footballers is hands down the best fantasy tool in existence. <laughs> I mean, come on. It's got sleepers, it's got busts, injury updates, full projections. This thing's even got full dynasty rankings. Don't overthink this. It's the only wingman you'll need this year. Head over to ultimatedraftkit.com and grab your copy right away. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the podcast. That's the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Jason, Mr. Nasty Man. You're, you're projecting just so much. So much nastiness. Okay. Nasty energy yeah. into my face. Welcome to the podcast. It is Wednesday, August the 3rd. It sounds really terrible. What? I'm projecting just <laughs> nastiness. I thought you were upset with August the 3rd. No, no, I was not upset. Uh, August the 3rd has done nothing to me. Uh, I am fine with August the 3rd. Uh, it's also known as the day before football. Oh, yes. Uh, apparently, there's football tomorrow, which I, look, is mind-blowing. We do this full-time. We are, I would say, plugged into the NFL. Yes, yes. And we're mi our minds are blown. It's like, wait, no, that's not true. There's not. We're still a long ways away before... Nope, it's tomorrow, the Hall of Fame game where no NFL players you will recognize will play in it, but it is a real NFL preseason game. Is that true, Kyle? Is it Thomas Brady's birthday? And Zach Wilson. And, oh, well, one of those is good <laughs> <laughs> at football. Uh, welcome into the podcast. You may have noticed Andy is not here. After two years, ladies and gentlemen, two years of running, COVID finally got him. So he is, he's doing all right, but mild, mild symptoms and everything. Hopefully we'll get him in remotely, uh, the rest of the week. But yeah, for the, now it's me and me and young nasty man. Yeah. Here we old, thought we were coming into the day right. as mortal enemies in a head to head mayhem mock. We were looking for mayhem and now we're best friends. That's we're, true. We're best friends again. We, oh, that's but, a great point. But tomorrow Mike is going to be difficult because tomorrow should be the head to head mayhem mock. Where we will absolutely hate each other. Yes. And yet, it will be just the two of us in the studio. This is going to be a real... Ooh, frenemies. A, re a frenemies. Best frenemies? Best frenemies show. So on today's show, we're going to roll through some news, some keep, trade, cut, and we're going to hit some of that mailbag. If you want to watch the show, youtube.com slash thefantasyfootballers. Make sure you subscribe, ring the bell. We got some sweet shorts going up there as well. The other socials, Instagram.com slash fantasy footballers. Find the three of us on Twitter and Instagram. I am at FF Hitman. Find Jason at Jason FFL. And find Andy at Andy Holloway. And a great friend of the the show there at the top reminding you ultimatedraftkit.com. It's the only draft tool that you need over the offseason. This thing is staying current with yes. The unfortunate news uh, that is happening, I mean, it's training camp, so yep. this is part of it. We know that this is part of the process. It still sucks. It still hurts every single time, but we are updating immediately as we have concrete news and we fix those projections. The quick question of the day comes in from Cigar? Sager? I'm going to say Sager. I don't think mamas are naming their kids Cigar very often. Well... Okay. <laughs> That's a fair point. Okay. I mean, they're from Portland. Does that change your opinion? <laughs> okay. Cigar from Portland <laughs> says what? Hey, ballers, how do you prepare for a draft if your league doesn't set a draft order until one hour before the start of the draft? 
Do you prepare the way you normally would for all 12 spots, or is there a more efficient way to prepare? I, I would say the most efficient way to prepare is the 369 method. Um, Standard, real fine. Yeah, uh, you know, look, the beginning, the middle, and the end of the draft. If you uh, do a couple mock drafts or a couple best balls where you are, um, you know, in the second or third spot, the sixth or seventh spot, and the ninth or tenth spot, you're going to be prepared for everything. It doesn't matter whether – you just need to know who's going near the beginnings of rounds, who's going near the ends of rounds, and kind of uh, prepare that way. The only other thing I would say – is that when when you do that kind of casual, easy preparation, um, just know if you happen to get on the turn, and and every year when I'm actually on the end of you know the beginning or end of a round, it takes me a couple of rounds before I remember to stop worrying so much about ADP, right? Because it really like there's there's 22 players gone before you're up. You're not getting you're not playing the ADP game. Grab who you want when you're on the absolute turn. Uh, I, I completely agree. It's just get ready for the middle and get ready for the turns. That's if you're it's, it, it's simple as that. You know, if you if you're playing like we, you know, I'm playing on underdog all the time. If you do some of the mock drafts there, or they're not mock. They're you know they're real live best ball drafts, and you get randomly assigned your spots there. So you just play in a bunch of those, and you'll be prepped for your draft. News and notes from around the league. All right, the big one that happened yesterday. Oh, man. Fireball Jones, a.k.a. Tim Patrick, wide receiver from the Denver Broncos, landed awkwardly. He tore his ACL. He will be out for the year. This is a, this is a, a big change for the Denver Broncos. Patrick just signed that multi-year extension, so thankfully the dude just got some money. And, I mean, we love Tim Patrick on the show. He is... I mean, not an elite wide receiver, but a very, very good player, very helpful for the Denver Broncos. But now we have massive fantasy implications. Russ Wilson, the trade, he is the quarterback of this team. He, Where he goes, fantasy goodness follows. I love Cortland Sutton as a breakout. Jason, you're pretty aligned. I don't know if you're as bullish on Sutton. Or, uh, or yeah, are no, we I, I, yeah, I together think we, now? I think we are aligned. I mean, okay. Sutton, to me, is the one player who's proven it on the field. He... Uh, I, I think he can and will be a dominant fantasy option. Jerry Judy has a lot to prove, but obviously has, has the talent and skill set to do it. While this is just awful news for Tim Patrick, uh, not great news for Russell Wilson or the Denver Broncos, for fantasy, you know, Cortland Sutton and Jerry Judy, they get bumps up in confidence. Sure. Um, we just did the live event in L.A. Uh, where Andy was bringing up the problems with Jerry Judy and his, his predominant and issue. And they are fair. It's a fair assessment of Jerry Judy to question, like, uh, yes, drafted to be great, as a wise man would say, but the guy has not done it on a football field. He has not, and, you know, the the thing is, is there are so many mouths to feed here. K.J. Hamler, who a lot of people don't remember, was a second-round pick right. in the same draft class as Jerry Judy. He was, you know, less than a round picked after him uh he was activated off the pup there's there's plenty of ways the fantasy options could go I'm with you that I think it's going to be Cortland Sutton as the main guy um this injury to Tim Patrick as another big bodied guy another you know if you're looking for the big bodied box out maybe a red zone target now that you know consolidates a little bit more for for Cortland Sutton here um but maybe Hamler who uh will find his way on the field far more in three wide receiver yes. sets now, now that he's uh, back from the very brutal injury. Uh, maybe he can be relevant. I know Andy loves KJ Hamler. Yeah, he, he's an interesting player, an absolute burner. And with an increase of snaps, we'll see what happens. And if you are an Albert Ogwebenom truther, I mean, the, the odds of him being really relevant for fantasy have gone up tremendously. Uh, like Jerry Judy's not a small guy. I mean, six one. He's just like frame wise. He's yeah. A, you I think know, he's six one one twenty two from one hundred and twenty two pounds. Just from the photographs I've seen, he's he uh, was, he's sure. not a thick boy. No, yeah. He just he doesn't he doesn't have a lot of mass going on there. But so it would, do we need another large feller like Cortland Sutton and Albert O certainly fits that a name to monitor. Well, look, 
first off, the Denver Broncos will probably be searching the free agency, uh, the, the wide receivers that are still out there. Obviously, if you're still a free agent right now, there's generally a reason for that. But I mean, like, Will Fuller is – has anyone heard a peep No, about Will Fuller? I, I have what the heck is going on? I have looked. Um, you know, I, I, I think he's, he's had his own, you know, um, you know, mental struggles over the last okay. couple of years. So I don't know that there's any news uh, recently on, on Will Fuller. But he is the name that's usually thrown around now that uh, Julio is signed as – it's him and old Odell Beckham Jr. Right. As the main free agent wide receivers – but Odell Beckham has a very long timeline before he's probably back at the end of the season. I doubt he signs in this time of year. Um, and then, and then there's Will Fuller, who's like, "We're all waiting. Like, where are you going to sign?" You're, he, he is a much better wide receiver than a lot of currently active rostered wide receivers. Irv Smith Jr., tight end from the Vikings, who lost his entire season last year, right before the season started. I believe it was a meniscus tear uh, that took him out. Well, he suffered a thumb injury on in Monday's practice, and he had to get surgery for it. The team believes he'll be ready for week one. He broke this, at a thumb. This, this sucks. It does suck. For redraft purposes, he's off the board. Yeah. Um, I, I really like Irv Smith, one of my absolute favorite um, late-round tight end targets. And if you're in a redraft league, unless he is actively playing in you know the preseason week three, which I don't think will be the case with the timeline right. for this injury, you don't draft him. Now, that does not mean his season is bad at all. If I'm in a best ball season, uh, I'm I'm definitely still drafting Irv Smith wherever he falls to now. He'll probably fall a round or two because of the fears of the thumb. Uh, the, the, the issue, though, is you don't know how slow it's going to start, and when you're in those last few rounds and you're deciding between a Hunter Henry and an Irv Smith and a Gerald Everett and a David Njoku, why would you ever pick the guy that, like, he might play week one? Let me ask you this, though. Uh, so you're at the end of the draft. Let's say you punted tight end. is You know, it's basically your last pick, and you have an IR spot in your in your league settings. Do you take to, do you take uh, Irv Smith and then just the other tight end that you liked? Maybe it was Gerald Everett or somebody. Is, is Irv Smith on the radar that you like him enough to IR stash him? That's actually a really good. I was just so ready to say no. I would never take a second tight end. You'll just grab him off the waivers. But you you bring up a really nice classic gamesmanship trick, which is if you have an IR spot in your league, yeah, absolutely draft Irv Smith with your last pick and then. And then just throw him on the IR and pick up another player for free. Kansas City Chiefs rookie wide receiver Sky Moore. He left practice early with a hip injury. He good. But he jumped on the social media. He jumped on the gram. He let us know, I'm good to go. So that's fantastic. He is he's getting a lot of that buzz from training camp. So a name to monitor. Over in Pittsburgh, the Deontay Johnson hold-in continues. We do know that they are talking, which is – better than you know not talking yeah the gm has has said things like they want Deontay to be a stealer for a long time and those are really positive things to hear for negotiations having anywhere to go because if they don't want that i mean the Steelers are kind of notorious at wide receiver for drafting great wide receivers g getting a lot out of them and saying i'm not paying you a ton of money so see you later i'm going to draft other great wide receivers and they've already done it this year i think they grabbed two very good wide receivers in the draft. So uh, the common, you know, knowledge thought process here has been that Deontay is going to be gone. But there's even though the even though the news right now says that the Steelers are far apart, uh, negotiations have stalled or whatever. It, it seems a little bit positive to me that they are still talking and trying to figure something out. And we had an interesting report here, Jason, out of Los Angeles. The way that Sean McVay is talking about his backfield, he said, mm, quote, yes. I look at it as we've got two starting running backs. Those guys are great compliments. I see them both as starting caliber players. Now, this is – it's not interesting from the fact that look, Daryl Henderson, uh, you know, high draft capital, third-round pick a couple of years ago. Cam Akers? Who, wait, you mean Darnell Anderson? No, I will not – Darnell Anderson! I will not play this game with you. <laughs> I'll play the game by myself. People <laughs> – Daryl Henderson has not done enough that we can give him a fake name 
that people uh, there will be just confusion everywhere. Yeah, be confused. Uh, Darnell. Anyways, you were so, talking about Darnell. So Daryl Henderson, Henderson draft capital was solid, good shifty player, but then they spent an even higher draft capital pick on Cam Akers. Unfortunately, he had the Achilles injury. He did come back for the playoffs last year, which was like a miracle of modern medicine. Mm -hmm. He was not a miracle on the field. He looked bad and very inefficient, but he was getting all of the work. One of the things that I don't think is brought up enough anywhere, and it seems kind of foolish, so I will bring it up now. Do it. Is the fact that a lot's made of like, well, he came back, Cam Akers came back. He was inefficient, but man, did he get the work. Yes. I mean, you look at the playoff carries, and it's like, oh, he got to work. He got to work. He got to – you know, Darnell Anderson was not there for those games. Daryl Henderson. Okay, Daryl Henderson was not there for those but games. But Sony Michelle was. Sure, but my – And Sony Michelle was coming off a very hot streak of, of being a good runner for well, them. Well, that's, that's why it's not brought up much is because they completely said, Sony, you're not the guy. Cam, you are. So you can very easily say, oh, Cam is their guy. They're just going to use him, period. But it it might just be that – Maybe Sony Michelle is not as good as Daryl Henderson, which he's not. In which case, the reason that they gave Cam all the work was because they didn't have Daryl Henderson. Now, Daryl Henderson has never been a model of health. I mean, obviously, he was missing those games with an MCL himself, barely got back for the Super Bowl, played a couple snaps in that. But I, I do think that there is a world where this isn't just Cam Akers getting complete bell cow work, and it's kind of a, a, a more split backfield than you expect. Now, aside from the the comment, this is never this is not how McVay has done things. Like he has always had the dude. I mean, going Todd Gurley, which of course, if you have healthy Todd Gurley, he's going to be the guy for your team. But Daryl Henderson was the guy to start this year. Was actually very good for fantasy football before he suffered yet another injury. That's kind of been the the knock on Henderson is he can't stay on a football field. So you're really buying into this. We have I, many years of McVay being a coach and him going with the bell cow system, very similar to Tomlin in Pittsburgh when he can. Yeah, I don't I don't know that that's... You have your concerns. I, yeah, I, I just don't know that that's really true. Like with Tomlin, you've got you know a decade. You've got multiple years where the backup behind him came in and was fully utilized. Whereas in this situation, you had Todd Gurley. So yeah, you had... Of course he was a bell cow. He was the best running back in the league. And then after that, when Henderson had his chance, well, Cam Akers was injured to start the year. So it was like, yeah, of course he was the dude. I don't know that we've seen a situation where you have two good, healthy running backs and see what McVay does. And hopefully we have two good, healthy running backs this year. And uh, I think if that is the case, that it will not just be a workhorse back. Yeah, it's something to monitor as Cam Akers is a pretty high-drafted running back. It's training camp, so it's the time where we choo-choo all aboard the hype train. And I had a player that I wanted to bring up, Jason, just and, and pick your brain about it. Because this guy, he was a third-day draft pick, so or he, the draft capital is not what you want. The the odds are against him. And it's been a it's been a wild ride for the fantasy footballers with this guy. So Fourth round pick from the Green Bay Packers, wide can, receiver. Can I guess him? Can you? Can I guess the wide receiver you want to bring up? Yeah, What's well, in the? You're looking at I, the name in front of you. Wait, is this Romeo Dubes? Yes, that's what I. I wanted to explain the process of, you know, like as you're trying to learn all these prospects, and it's it's Romeo uh, Dubs. <laughs> no, no, oh, dang, Romeo it. Dobbs, but it's spelled D O U, and it was like Romeo Dubes that. Okay, and then we were alerted. No, it's Romeo Dubs, and now we've been alerted again. It is in fact Romeo Dobbs. So until That's so dumb though. So in, dumb. Well, it, just, spell your name right. <laughs> we're doing this again, Tunyon. Uh, yes. Okay. Well, Tunyon, Tunyon got me with the T O N. He didn't choose the spelling of his name. It's just so funny that it's it's Dobbs. Like there is a name for that. So there's yeah. a spelling for that. So, but yes, Romeo Dobbs. We could talk about the now that we've okay. talked about his name. So rookie wide receiver for the Green Bay Packers, which again, like generally speaking, rookies for Aaron Rodgers do not interest me. But he is getting a lot of steam coming out of here uh, of training camp. He's six two two oh four. You know, he ran a four five at his pro day. So that's not necessarily the speed you want. 
but we just had a, a training camp video come out where he is burning. Uh, he's burning one of the Packers' fast DBs, four-year starter or a four-year player out of Nevada. Production profile is very solid. I mean, Nevada, of course, smaller school, but 900, nearly 1,009 touchdowns, 1,100 yards and 11 touchdowns this past season. Like, where are you at? Is this – do you do you think that this drumbeat can build to something of that has substance or is it just, well, Christian Watson's out when he's back, Dubs will go back to no, the bench? No, this, this matters to me quite a bit. I think okay. that um, – look – there is a clear need at wide receiver for the Green Bay Packers. When you lose Devontae Adams, you don't you 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 know, you you have to find someone else to throw the ball to. He was, you know, thirty percent of your targets. And so when you draft Christian Watson, you're saying, Okay, this is who I I want as a as a general manager, this is who I want to be the primary replacement. Except he's injured. And Aaron Rodgers is a timing thrower. He is a Build trust guy. I need to know where you are going to be and know that you're going to be there. And so he's getting the work with Dobbs right now, and the camp reports have been really good with Dobbs, and Aaron Rodgers has said good things about Dobbs. So you put it all together, and it's – considering right now Christian Watson is still – I mean, you're, you're talking eight, nine rounds ahead of Dobbs. They're both rookies coming in. Draft capital matters a little bit, you know. The, the obviously it matters for talent and what you've done. Obviously, the presumption is the better player is drafted earlier, and it matters a little bit for money and what the team has invested. But Aaron Rodgers has never had these first round high draft capital, great wide receivers. That's true. He likes to get the credit and the glory. <laughs> so I mean, look, <laughs> he's he's not drafting the players, Jason. I'm, I know. So he's going to use the. He wants the who's the last guy you drafted? I'm going to make him great because that makes me great. I'm not at the point where for redraft purposes, I'm ready to push some chips in on, on Dobbs, but it's just, it's, it's there, the time of year to make sure that we're aware of all these players. There are more shallow dynasty leagues where Dobbs is available on waivers right now. So yes. go take a look and in your, you know, if you're doing a best ball drafts where you're going 18 rounds, it's a great pick at the end of the draft. All right, we're going to take a quick break and then we'll be back for some keep trade cut. All right, Jason, it is keep trade cut time. Are you prepared? I am fully prepared. Keep trade cut. All right, we have a trio of round two wide receivers per the sleeper platform ADP. Debo Samuel out of Sound of Sound Francisco. Sound Francisco. They love their noises there. <laughs> It's a bay, you know, because oh, so the, the, the sound reverberates. Mm, sound, that's why they of, call it Sound Francisco. <laughs> Debo Samuel, our consensus number six wide receiver. CeeDee Lamb out of Dallas or Mike Evans out of Tampa Bay. These are our consensus six, seven, and eight. That, uh, that doesn't mean that that's how you have it individually ranked, but keep trade cut, Jay. What are you doing with these players? Yeah, I, I really love this question kicking it off here because this is one that you will be deciding about. If you are, you know, let's say you have the ninth pick or the tenth pick sure. in your league. The second round, you're going to be staring at these three guys and you're going to be saying, which one of these guys do I take? If you had asked me a week ago, it would have been different. Because oh, did the contract the contract absolutely okay. made the difference? When I'm spending a high end second round pick, I still don't want the question marks of a player that is holding in because you just don't ever know. And that was Debo Samuel. Now that he has signed, and I personally care about the fact that he is incentivized in the rushing game. It says that they're going to use him that way. I mean, I've seen a lot of different ways to say that if you take away Debo's rushing like you take away all of his rushing touchdowns he outscored Stephon Diggs last year so he he's a good wide receiver but he's going to have rushing he's going to have receiving he was the wide receiver two last year and yeah Trey Lance comes in there's quarterback changes but you're not talking about a guy who was good you're talking about a guy who was great he is the centerpiece of this offense he just got paid like it 
and Shanahan is going to design and scheme things specifically for him. I mean, Debo Samuel's a man. And That's true. I'm going to draft him like a man. Now you're a man. A man, man, man. And I'm going to cut the boy. You're going to cut the the boy, CeeDee Lamb. Really? Yeah. Interesting. So uh, th- what I like about these three players is they all could potentially be top five guys, in my opinion. and But they all have some things that are a little shaky. You pointed out the the uh, uh, the quarterback change for Debo Samuel, and what does that mean? Mike Evans was looking oh. like the last man standing for Tom Brady. And then in the last couple of weeks, we've seen, or even just the last week, we saw Chris Godwin was activated for training camp. That doesn't mean he's ready for week one. But, the, I mean, those are good signs. Oh, yeah. It's much better than being on the pup. And then the team added Julio Jones. as Her, a depth I've heard wide of him. We, yes, as a, as a depth wide receiver. And then CeeDee Lamb. He, yeah, James Washington just went down with an unfortunate Jones fracture in his foot. But CeeDee Lamb, we still have, have yet to see him be truly the number one dominant wide receiver, which he has to be that for Dallas to be good on the on the offensive side of the football I oh man so you you're easily on the Debo side I'm easily on the Debo side for the keep that one to me is Debo Samuel when you're talking about these three guys they all have a few question marks right you have you have the quarterback change for Debo you have the fact that we've never really seen CeeDee Lamb truly be a dominant one in fantasy and you now have Mike Evans not being the clear alpha target leader necessarily that he looked like he was going to be for the first half of the year. So if you have questions with them all, I think, well, what's the ceiling for each one of them? And the ceiling we saw last year from Debo Samuel is, I mean, Debo Samuel would have been the wide receiver one in almost every other year, but Cooper Cup was so stinking good that he was the wide receiver two. It's insulting to call what Debo Samuel did last year a wide receiver two or the wide receiver two. Now, you can have a real close and great debate between Mike Evans and CeeDee Lamb because the targets have to go to CeeDee Lamb. There just isn't really another option. He is the only wide receiver on the depth chart right now who has an NFL touchdown reception. Which is absurd. So, I get it. If you want to go with the youth of CeeDee Lamb, the targets that just have to be there, I don't have any problem with that whatsoever. But I do worry, man. I... Look, C.D. Lamb's a player I love. He was a my guy last year. Sure. I, I'm 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 a huge C.D. Lamb uh, believer, but I have fears because he should have done more last year. He really should have. He had the opportunity to dominate, and what he did was he was good. He was. He was. I mean, he was much better. So in games without Michael Gallup or Cooper, he was over 14 points a game. And in games with one of those players, it was down under 12. So there was certainly a a noticeable bump in the in the small sample where those guys weren't available. Eileen, yeah. Oh, it, I, Mike Evans is 29. Yeah, I'm going Debo Samuel. It's very, very close. It's very, very close. All right, picks. At so the, wait, wait, wait. So I'm keeping Oh, yeah, Debo. I got I to gotta trade and cut people. I'm going to trade. I think that people like CeeDee Lamb more than they, Mike they, Evans They right do, now. so I'm going to trade CeeDee Lamb. Yeah, maximize that value. Got to play the market. Evans. So we're the same on that one? We are. We are aligned. Best friends. Picks at the 4-5 turn with question marks. Deontay Johnson out of Pittsburgh, who is holding in. Uh, top eight in targets each of the last two seasons. But then, which Deontay's got the quarterback questions as well. The reports on Mitchell Trubisky's camp day yesterday were uh, not good, as one <laughs> would say. Travis Etienne running back for the Jacksonville Jaguars or Darren Waller, who could be still a an elite tight end, but there are huge question marks of, of him last year. Just wasn't very productive in his opportunity. I know he was a bit banged up, and now Devontae Adams, the target monster, is coming to the Raiders' offense. Keep trade cut. Deontay, Travis Etienne, Darren Waller. And we're going to assume here that because this is the 4-5 turn that your first three players – a line for you to take e- any one of yeah, these of course, positions. Of course. It's, it's, I, I don't want to make this, uh, it's better to take a wide receiver over a running back or a tight end over a wide receiver here. This is about 
which one of these three guys is better for your fantasy team at that point in the draft. And while I don't usually care about hype pieces in the training camp season, I don't care okay. that, oh, this player is looking well, great. There's some that we care about. There is some. And one of the most important things I'm looking for for news in training camp is injury-related. Who's healthy, who's not? Okay. I thought you were getting, like, blown away by Deontay Johnson's holding tape. Oh, man. It's just He's, the news. He no. is. Did you see that lean against the wall? <laughs> no, it's Travis. Took like a bite of a snow cone? Travis Etienne. <laughs> I hope that's what he's doing during camp. He's I out there too. by the snow cone machine, <laughs> just proving a point. I mean, Put, there's got to be a... putting extra syrup on top. Like, you see this? I'm going to keep doing this. I'm going to keep putting that syrup up here. <laughs> you give like, me a contract. Well, you think I'm going to play? Of course I want more pumps. <laughs> um, but no, Travis Etienne has been the star of training camp, according to multiple sources from basically any anybody around the Jacksonville Jaguars says that he's great. Now, if this was a normal season where he did whatever he did last year and they come in and say he's great, I completely dismiss it. I don't care whatsoever. You're going to have camp reports from every team saying this player is the star. But the reason I care about it is because he's coming off of an injury and we just don't know, is he fully ready to go? Well, if okay. he's the star of camp and he's really showing great burst, that doesn't mean to me that, oh, he's more special than I thought. It means he's healthy. He's ready to go. The injury is not a concern. This is, the, you know, this is the beginning of August. We've got almost two months until he's playing meaningful football. If he's ready to go now and showing elite athleticism in camp, that is great news for me for a pass-catching running back, which is the type of running back I want who played college ball with Lawrence. So I am starting to find myself more and more. I know I'm the highest on ETN out of the three of us. But I, I find myself more and more in on ETN, especially at the 4-5 turn. I don't think I could pass him up there. Yeah, you are just one spot higher than me on Travis ETN. Oh, so, uh, so I'm the highest? Yeah. Okay. You, you so are. I, hey, <laughs> pump the brakes over there, big guy. Well, let's, uh, Andy is super low. Andy. Yeah, yeah, yes, of course, of course. Uh, the, my problem with Travis ETN is just like my, my brain – my like my knowledge of running backs recovering from an Achilles injury, medical experts giving me that information, my history in fantasy football of running backs with an Achilles injury, just how inefficient Cam Akers was when he returned, and yet they all out of Jacksonville continue to say James Robinson's going to be good, he's going to be the lead running back. Like I. I cannot get that out of the back of my head, and it's driving me nuts because everything it, everything within me says that is absolute nonsense. James Robinson has a 0.0% .0 chance to be ready for the beginning of the season. He has a sub-10% chance to have any relevance during this fantasy football season. And, I mean, honestly, I think that's the only thing that is holding Travis Etienne's ADP. He's in a... In a He's hovering around the airport, just waiting for his time to land. Because if if Robinson were clear, if if they had come out and said, uh, "Robinson, we just we don't think it's gonna, he'll be ready." Travis Etienne would be on, on a rocket ship up yeah. the ADP board. So, I, for I'm taking Travis Etienne here. I think that the the risk reward here says the pick is to go with with the first round running back paired with his college quarterback, elite pass catching skills and the opportunity will be there Deontay Johnson an incredibly great player but Mitch Trubisky Kenny Pickett Darren Waller last year with Devontae Adams I'm going with Travis Etienne here man nice we are we are in agreement we're holding hands I on wish best I'd, friends day and I mean I love being your best friend mm -hmm. it's great I wish we could disagree on some of these I'm I do gonna, too I and uh I'm sure we will disagree as I'm we go trade Deontay I'm going to cut Deontay. Oh, is that because you you just have a personal vendetta against Deontay Johnson? Yeah, yeah, I do. Um, also, because I think, you know, we we talked about the hold-in, that those things matter. Darren Waller um, is, you know, at the 4-5 at the turn, I don't see him there that often. Um, he's been going consistently ahead of George Kittle, and I think that his value is there. 
Um, and I will never give proper value to Deontay Johnson. It's kind of just off brand. So I will go um, trade Darren Waller, cut Deontay Johnson, keep Travis Etienne. There are it's very gotta, rare. Got to keep the brand going. Got to keep right? the brand going. It's very rare to have truly explosive, high draft capital, young running backs in the fourth round. Right. I mean that is like the the dream fantasy football asset you want is an explosive, athletic, high draft capital, young running back. And that's Travis Etienne and Bruce Hall. Brees Hall's also there in the fourth. Who'd keep Brees Hall in the fourth round, people? I know you love Brees Hall. Yeah. But you guys, I feel like you were also a Travis Etienne guy. Last yeah, I, year. I did. I liked him quite a bit. Who did you like more going into the draft process, Etienne or Brees Hall? Oh, Brees Hall, not even, okay. not even remotely. So close. then you're still good. You'd head to head. Head Brees to head, Hall, I'm easy. taking Brees Hall over Travis Etienne. All right, let's talk about wide receivers with a quarterback change. DJ Moore from Carolina, Mr. Four Touchdowns a season. Jalen Waddell, who set the rookie reception record this past year. Or Allen Robinson goes to the, oh, man. <laughs> to the oh, Los Angeles. I'm out of here. To the Los Angeles Rams, who had uh, a poo poo year for the Chicago Bears. Where are you going, Jay? How do you even start to break down this equation? I start by being introspective and honest with myself about could you could have done that with the last one with Deontay Johnson but you refused that was a brand thing this is more <laughs> of helping the foot clan and the reality is I've you know I've been um negative on Allen Robinson for a while it worked out great last year because he was um non-existent he was just the he worst hurt me a lot last year I it, you want to know why because you drafted him. That's why. Yes. Anybody who drafted Allen Robinson knows the scars and the pains because he was on the field. He, he was playing football. You just didn't know it because, I mean, if he comes out and dominates, what do Bears fans think? Yeah. Do they blame Fields or do they go, man, that dude was sandbagging? Because he wanted out, and then they franchise him. Remember, the whole contract situation was not good. He did. Just a reminder – Foot Clan. He took home last year's prestigious Footy Award for the poopiest pants award. Uh, I believe the the Footy is still in the mail. Oh yeah, it's on its way. Freight yeah. takes a long time. I mean, you gotta. We ship it all over the world. We source from only the finest factories around the globe. The Iron Smiths are. I mean, look, when selectively you, chosen. When your trophy is made up of twelve hundred individual parts and pieces, it takes. It takes a while. Takes a while. Yeah. So, uh, Mr. Robinson. Don't Poopy, worry. Poopy's and he pants changed award. his address. Yeah, that was a hard it thing. It probably to arrived in return Chicago. Return to Cinder? Come on. It's thousands of dollars. And we just got to pony up and pay so I can go to Los Angeles? Perfect for the poopiest pants. Uh, so, I've, where, where, what were we we're, talking about? We were talking about oh, Alan but, Robinson. So, and, a lot of his you know, metrics, a lot of his targets were not catchable for Alan Robinson. So, it, uh, just, it was an absolute combination of terrible things. So, who are you keeping? Well, the keep in this situation, I I will say this: Allen Robinson's been moving up and up and up my rankings. When I when I look at my stats, especially now that Van Jefferson has his injury, and now it really seems like Allen Robinson is the two. If you go back just a very short period of time. Robert Woods was one of my favorite draft assets every sure. year. He was never valued where he should have been. He was basically, you know, the type of wide receiver 15, 16, consistent, awesome wide receiver two for that team. And that's what Allen Robinson projects to be. Uh, obviously, he's, his camp highlights have been great. And the way that uh, Sean McVay and Matthew Stafford talk about him, he is going to be a central integral piece to this offense that being said it's hard for me to take him over a guy like dj moore who has multiple years of 1100 yards uh in a row and by you know th three years in a row of 1100 plus and only four touchdowns now he gets a quarterback that doesn't throw two percent touchdown rate hopefully <laughs> uh, although i did see the camp <laughs> battle raging oh, on gosh yeah uh, you know, so I think I go DJ Moore here as, as my keep. I'm I, it's DJ Moore for me because I can't quit him. I think he's a an electric talent, and he's 
He's the number one in his offense. I, I get it that not all number one wide receivers in offenses are equal, and sometimes there's a wide receiver too that you would prefer over a number one. But DJ Moore with those numbers, if you're putting up over 1,100 yards each and every year and you have someone who can actually throw touchdowns and you just you just bump that number up a little. We don't I don't need 12 touchdowns DJ Moore. I would love I mean I I'd love it. I'd love it if you gave me 12 touchdowns. But we don't need that. You give me 8. You give me 1108 and I will be very excited. Yeah, this is this is a really interesting, you know, process evaluation keep trade cut. Ch keep trade cut because <laughs> What you're looking at here is what's most important, the quarterback play versus the player talent versus the player's position on the offense, because those are the three differences here. Most right. talented. We haven't even talked about Waddle. Most talented wide receiver out of these three is Jalen Waddle. He is the best pure wide receiver of these three. That's that's my firm belief. I think that he is interesting. Uh, you know, I mean, his draft capital says so. His speed and forty times says so. Him setting the rookie receptions record last year says so. He doesn't quite have the quarterback talent that Allen Robinson has. And he's number two on the depth chart. That's why, to me, he's probably the third of these three players, even though I think he's the best wide receiver. Allen Robinson has the best quarterback of the three and is clearly the wide receiver two. And then DJ Moore is the worst quarterback, but is the wide receiver one. They're all talented. I'm going to keep DJ Moore, trade Allen Robinson, and cut Jalen Waddell. And I hope... To regret that. I want Jalen Waddle to finish this year as the wide receiver one for that team. Some men just want to watch the world burn. Fair. I'm keeping DJ Moore. I'm trading Jalen Waddle. I think he's still I'm more so valuable. I'm happy to hear Allen Robinson get the cut. Allen Robinson gets the cut. Is it, you know, he cut you last year. You cut him this year. He, I'm, he hurt me deep really cuts. bad. Deep, deep cuts. Because you... <sighs> You were all in on a different wide receiver, if I remember, in the league well, record draft. It and was. Robinson wasn't supposed to be there. And he Correct. fell to you, and you're yes. like, well, I guess I got to take him. It, so you took him. It was a celebration <laughs> that the landmine was presented to me, and I gladly stepped upon it. Mm. All right, let's get into the mailbag. 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 Yes, sir. All right, this one's from Dylon in San Antonio. Hi, ballers. How do you view the upside of DJ Chark, who is now with the Lions if you're just getting back into fantasy football? I think the upside of DJ Chark is good in best ball. Okay. Um, DJ Chark is obviously always profiled as a field stretching down you know he's gonna run he's a go very route tall and he's very fast and he's gonna catch a deep bomb and he's gonna get a couple long touchdowns and when those happen he will be phenomenal for fantasy he'll put up a, a 16 to 23 point fantasy week and be great but I I don't think with the Lions offense um with Amon Ross St. Brown and TJ Hawkinson and DeAndre Swift all active, DJ Chark could still be the wide receiver one for this team during that stretch before Jamison Williams comes back, but I don't think he's going to be consistent at all. He's a guy that I'm not really wanting to draft and put in my lineups because I don't think the consistency will be there. You just have to get lucky. So if you want to do that week one, try to get lucky, and if it hits maybe trade the dude okay great uh but the reality is you're you're not going to do that because leaving your draft you, where are you drafting dj dj chark at the end of your draft sure you're not going to start him over other wide receivers uh, you know week one so th this is why i'm saying dfs lineups because he's going to be affordable or best ball lineups because you you get all the bomb touchdowns but don't have to make the start sit decisions that's the only place i really want dj chark but i do know kyle the Borgognoni uh, is a DJ Chark truther, <laughs> which, which is, is I, I don't know that I'd go that far, but here's the I thing. just wanted to embarrass him. Oh, fair. Uh, Jamison Williams, their first round rookie wide receiver pick. He, the, we have the latest reports uh, around the NFL put out that, that likely to start on the NFI list, return in November. So Williams should not be a factor when you're drafting DJ Chark in the, one of the, like, you know, when you're doing all your research and your projections moving into the next year, 
you always come across some stats or a trend and your mind just just shrivels down into into this a little raisin into an abs- yes to a raisin perfection dj chark had three healthy games last year in two of them he was a top 24 wide receiver it was absolutely disgusting when i like 12 targets, three receptions. <laughs> yes, I know. Trevor Lawrence, game week one last year. But those three receptions turned into 86 and a touchdown. If you say three for 86 and a touchdown, it's like, oh, man, that's a great game. It is. But when you find out he had 12 <laughs> targets, I mean, that but, it, he caught 25% of his passes. But the point stands, in two of his three healthy games to start the year, DJ Chark was a top 24 guy. I think they gave him $10 million. The Lions are going to have to throw. It, DJ Chark is interesting when it, if you when you're just sifting through that garbage at the end of your fantasy football draft. DJ Chark is somewhat interesting. All right, we got uh, keeper decision uh, keeper decision from Joel in New York City. Hello, friends. Would you keep Mark Andrews in the fourth or Cam Akers in the seventh half point PPR? Ooh, this one is really, really tough. Uh, I know we talked at the open of the show about Cam Akers and my belief that if him and Henderson are are both healthy, that there is an outcome where it is a timeshare. Um, you know, if I had to, I mean, it will be Henderson will be involved. It's just a matter of what is that scale? Because if if it's you know sixty five percent Cam Akers, that is a massive workload for Akers. If it's fifty fifty, then it's different, but man, when you don't have to take the draft capital of, you know, that that third or fourth round pick for Cam Akers, you can get him in the seventh. It could be worth that risk, but man, Mark Andrews. So you're tight end one in the fourth. Yeah, round. I I love Mark Andrews. The more that I think about, I left last season saying I I believe Mark Andrews is a tight end one over Travis Kelsey. Then the Tyreek Hill stuff happened, and. Travis Kelsey seems so locked in, assured of his volume. Travis Kelsey's going to be 33, man. There are red flag worries. But you understand that he is Zeus, and but, mythological gods do not age. That is something I had not considered. We'll factor that into your projections. Okay, it looks like his age is now infinite. <laughs> so it's the little, what's the little the, what's the eight shortcut? on its side. Do you, do you know the shortcut to put that in there? <laughs> no, I don't. No. Um, it, uh, I'm going to take Mark Andrews in the floor. I'm taking Mark Andrews. All right. Dave in Pennsylvania, can I take <laughs> – Dave's asking for some permission here. Dave, you're, you're a grown fella. Do You do what you want, but we'll answer your question. Dave says, can I take Stephon Diggs over Jamar Chase with the 108? Absolutely you can. Um, now, <laughs> should he? This so, is a PPR league. In a, in a full PPR league – is I think the better place to do it because Diggs is someone that I think could command a 30% target share of the highest passing offense in the league. Diggs numbers last year, he should have had several more touchdowns than he did based on uh, his target rates in the red zone and uh, in the end zone. I love Diggs and I have personally drafted Diggs over Jamar Chase. So I'm, I don't think this is crazy at all. Now, that is not my norm. Like, I, this is kind of a, a di- diversifying the portfolio. Do you have – so you have Chase projected above Diggs? I have, I have Chase projected projected above Diggs. I would usually go Jamar Chase in a full PPR. I don't have any problem with Diggs ahead. I, I think all four players, that speaking of Jamar Chase, Stephon Diggs, Justin Jefferson, and Cooper Cup, those four guys – can all finish as the wide receiver one. So I don't have any problem with it. I love Diggs. That being said, I know this is stupid and it's unimportant and it's one of those things where you just tell yourself, this, don't care. This is what people come don't for. Don't care. Don't the care. fantasy football. Don't care. Don't care about this. But, man, you just watch some of these training camp highlights of, <laughs> of Jamar Chase and you're like, oh, he's so good. He's so good. He just like the DBs have no chance. It's like I'm watching these DBs play out of their mind great, and they're all over him, and then he just turns on a little bit of jets. It's like, oh, yeah, three yards of separation. You're never catching back up to him, and the reports have been that yeah, I saw I saw some B reporters say, you know, if you're worried, there's been zero regression to Jamar Chase's game. Yeah. 
in training camp. Uh, the dude is great. Also, can I let, let's talk um, let's, segue. Let's segue do here. it. Um, like the the motorized. Vehicle? Yeah, I'm gonna get on and hold on tight. <laughs> You're gonna pull I'm apart a, it. I'm gonna lean forward a little bit and let's go. Um, I want to talk about Kyle Pitts. Uh, okay, that's a. <laughs> it's a train. Okay, it's so a where's the segue? The segue's under my feet and in my hands. Okay, um, and uh, that's how we're transitioning the, topics. The the professional segue here is training camp videos showing a physically dominant okay. specimen that defenders just can't do anything about. Right, that is Kyle Pitts. Yes, that is Kyle. Like, I can't imagine anyone in the league that can guard Kyle Pitts. If he was a wide receiver, if he was just literally, a, you know, he's full time wide receiver. Why couldn't he be as good as literally any other wide receiver in the league? And they do line him up as wide receiver a lot. So it's like, am I being too – because I haven't drafted him once. He's going too high. He's always the tight end three off the board, which he, I think he's the tight end six in my rankings. It's hard for me to make the stats work with Marcus Mariota at quarterback and the expected passing volume of the Falcons. I, But I every time I watch these videos, I think – you could throw it to Pitts every play, and it will work. We, we've thought that about Julio Jones as well. And you could, and he, yes, and he it dominated. <laughs> so uh, it, 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 it just – it's. I think we, we were asked the question of the fire and ice, like who are you most afraid of being wrong about? And it was Brees Hall because I love him so much, and I, I'm, I'm just afraid of um, let, letting people down or leading people to maybe a, a workload that – isn't there enough in rookie season? I don't think that's going to happen. That's my fear. But my 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 other big fear is Kyle Pitts because I want in on the talent. I want in. I watch just, you know, you watch film and you go, it's a film versus analytics thing where when I watch film, I say he can't be stopped. Mm -hmm. And then when I put the math to the sheet and the team and the quarterback, I go, he can have a lot the of... The numbers will stop him. The numbers will stop him. Yeah, the, the he can have a whole lot of a poop pie, but you don't want any of it. Right. So, like, at the end of the day, do you want to draft a big slice of a poop pie, or do you want uh, a small slice of, like, a banana cream? Because I'll take, I'll take banana cream every time. So, uh, you're letting the statisticals and the uh, projections... I mean, that's very low T. Yeah, yeah. So, you're letting that stop Nerd! <laughs> And we're all nerds here. So, okay. So, are you in? or I'm, Where that, are we? Are you is, in or are you out on Kyle Pitts? Are you just, that is the question. You're just giving a big disclaimer. I'm giving a big disclaimer, and I'm asking you for help. This question comes in from Jason Moore from the Fantasy Footballers. Should I be in on Kyle Pitts at his current <laughs> ADP? And that's for you to decide at home. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us. Do not forget the Ultimate Draft Kit, getting updated. Kyle Pitts could be getting updated right now. Who knows? UltimateDraftKit.com. That's going to do it, everybody. We will be back tomorrow. Projected to have the Mayhem Draft, but as Mayhem goes, Mayhem goes. So we'll see. But we will be here tomorrow. Goodbye, everybody. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.